can you say something like tough result to take but a good point on the road fans were amazing as always oh uh, you know what if you're watching this if you're watching this i applaud you you're a true fan because i certainly wouldn't be watching that to do at liverpool today ah uh, no 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 anyway so today i'm going to try and well, I'm, I'm going to vent a little bit and i'm going to just try and process it and try and look on the positives because that's what we try and do here so we've drawn it feels like a loss as verge said and you know what i'm bemoaning more than just the two points dropped which is it's a big two points dropped you know the, the two two things okay three things <laughs> that bug me the most one is the loss itself or fucking law see the draw itself two is the fact that we now have to look around you know what i mean beforehand we didn't have to worry about what these two were doing we could just be like all we know is eight more wins seven more wins whatever it is whereas now we have to be like Oh, were you gonna? No, no, you didn't. Oh, you're gonna slip up, last minute winner? Okay. That's a trick. Okay, they smashed them. <sighs> hate that. And three, it's the loss of momentum. I think especially at this time of the year, at this part of a season in a title race, momentum is huge. And it kind of gets in the, our players' heads, it gets in the opposition's heads when you just keep winning and winning and winning and it almost becomes a formality. I mean, obviously it's a lot tougher than that, but mentally I just feel like We've just taken a bit of a step back, momentum-wise. I mean, realistically, like, City and Arsenal dropped two points last week or whenever it was. We dropped two points this week. It's not the end of the world. The only thing that's frustrating is that it was so fucking preventable. <sighs> Do you know what? I need to talk to my therapist. Salah's general play has been frustrating the hell out of me. There was a moment, mm. there was a moment where I told Mo, Mo Salah to fuck off. Um... It was when he was played through down the middle towards the end of the game and I felt he had enough there to just bust a gut, get to the ball mm -hmm. and get one on one with the keeper. He, he didn't do it. Oh! I know Kwanzaa only debuted this year. Why Why is he making that mm -hmm. pass? When he turned around, I'm like, what are you turning around for? Like, There's the whole pitch in front of you. Fucking. And then the fact that it's Bruno Fernandes, not him. Not him. When is Trent and Jota getting back into the team? Okay, I, can't, I feel like I've been told next week mm. for the last six weeks. You know what it is? It's the fact that both of these games against Man United are completely our mm. fault. And we didn't learn of from course. the first one. Uh, it, would not, it would be nice, mm. by the way, for us to get a five on two that actually resulted in a goal. And not us going... Aah! Do you think you're pinning too much of your happiness on um, external factors rather than internal? So, ten minutes before the goal, we're you know we're getting chances. Yes, okay, and then we scored a goal. Uh, it's a great, it's a great finish by Diaz. I have to say. Night. What? That was liquid football. And it's like, it's one of those, they were all so busy worrying about Van Dyke that Diaz, Diaz and Nunes could just walk in and be like, oh, look at all the space. Um, and a great finish by Diaz. And I think the last few weeks, I think he's upped his output. He's had goal involvements, I think, in pretty much the last four games or something like that. I don't check the stats, but, you know, something like that. Brilliant finish, actually. And I was like, yes, come on. Like, for the 10 minutes after that, then, I was like, Ooh, another chance there. Oh, close one. That was a close one. Oh, probably should have finished that, I think. Pasta. Oh. It was all that. I knew, I was just, I already knew that it was going to be, okay, by half time. we have to, I feel like we have to get another goal. Because the second half isn't going to be like this. Because they were just all over the place. <laughs> what was it like 12 14 shots to their zero at old trafford it's like it's like that scene in a horror movie where you know the bad guy is gonna come back for one last <laughs> like just fucking put some extra bullets in his head while he's lying there don't be forgetting that this guy is still here you haven't checked to see if he's dead yet just fucking the annoying thing is that I can see another reality where we actually do score one or two of those other chances in the first half. It's 3-0, and then it's about damage control for them. 
we go on and we, you know, ah, let's fucking have a bit of that, Arsenal, City, United, everyone else, fuck off. Just we gave them the chance. And I tell you what, their goals as well. Bruno Fernandes. I mean, it's a fucking brilliant goal as well. You fucking rap bastard, you. May news goal. I literally just went. I was sitting. On, I was sitting on my bed, legs crossed, with a laptop in front of me, and the goal went in. And I was. I just went like. It's like oh fuck. And then with the penno, with the penno, I'm like, I'm still already shouting about the Casemiro handball. That was like I. I didn't even. I haven't even looked back at it since. I haven't seen a slow mo of it. But it was like 20 seconds before, I was like, handball, handball, handball. And then Elliot gets tackled. It was like, oh, wait, no, no, this one, this is worse, this is worse. Uh, I mean, the most stonewall penalty you'll ever see. No complaints from anybody. Um, mad, mad that he's even doing that, but fine. And then they're shaping up for the penno. Like all this, they're doing the check to see if it's a penno. I mean, why, I don't know. And then... I see McAllister with the ball under his arm at the spot, and I was thinking, I was, th I'm there like, yes, Mac, and like then, then Salah, Salah was obviously like, all right, <laughs> not joking around, give me the ball. Salah, I will say, before, I mean, he tucks away the penalty. It's a nice penalty. Salah, I'll be honest. Salah annoyed the fuck out of me in this game. Actually, the last couple of games, is I feel like his general play has been shy. <laughs> I feel like his decision making is so off. He's either tries to take on everyone. He's shooting from where he shouldn't be shooting. He's shooting when he should when he should pass. When he does get a shot, he's either tamely hitting it into the keeper or firing it over. I know it's it's blasphemous. He's the reason why. He, again, he's the reason why we got this point. <clears throat> anyway, enough of that. <laughs> That's all the negative stuff out of the way. That's okay. I, I vented now. Okay. That was a long vent that I didn't know I needed. <laughs> I, <laughs> normally I have like little notes that I'm like, oh yeah, I'll talk about this and I'll talk about that. I haven't even looked at it yet. How long are we into this video now? I never do this. The positives. One. I want, I want this to fester in the players' heads. I want this to sting. Don't put any ointment on this. The positives is it'll give us a kick up the arse. This will give us a kick up the arse that we that I think we needed. Just be more clinical. We scored the most goals than any other team in Europe this year. Yet it still feels like we're one of the most wasteful teams. Let's just sure it up. And what's a good way to sure it up? I'll tell you how. By getting our most clinical finisher back, which is Diogo Jota. He's back next week. Trent's back next week. Alisson's back next week. Good. Let's just, if we can try... Because now, see, I had to get all that out so I could now just park that. Okay, that's out of me now. I'm sorry, it's it's out there now. That's parked to one side. Now, here's where we're actually going. We're top of the league. Only second on goal difference with seven games to go. Arsenal have to play Chelsea. They're away to United. They're away to Spurs. They do not have easy fixtures. Um, we've now gotten our hardest fixture out of the way. We simply cannot afford to lose another game or draw. I think I think if we win a remaining seven, I think we are champions. That's that's happened now. So let's not I mean, I had to get off Twitter yesterday because the amount of people just thrown in the tab like that's it. We're joint top of the of the league. On the other positives, we're no longer favourites anymore. That's how I like it. Somehow Man City are now the favourites. Even though Arsenal are the ones who went top. Also on the positives, McAllister, absolutely fantastic again. Can't he just, I mean, he's, he is on another level at the minute. Um, Elliot, again, I mean, what, the most impactful substitute in the Premier League. And I'm sorry that he has to have that substitute title because he is good enough to be a starter. But he has such an impact off the bench. Every, like the second Elliot comes on every time, he immediately changes the game and improves how we how we play anyway i don't even know what this was i just had to vent hopefully it was cathartic in some way maybe i mirrored what you're also thinking whereas previously i was like jota and trent yeah when they come back even better whereas now i'm like when is jota and trent coming back um because we need extra options 
that's these are the sort of games where I miss Jota, where it's like the chances are literally figuratively presenting themselves to you. I can't wait for them to all, to all come back. But you know what? We'll keep moving on. We have three very tricky away fixtures coming up. That will really, I mean, what, in six days? <laughs> Something mental like that. All winnable games. We simply have to win. A little bit of perspective, though. I mean, we're still here in a title race under Jurgen Klopp. And you, we don't know how things are going to go with the, new, with the new boss, the new gaffer. I don't think we're going to look back at this title race and think, I should have moaned more about those two points we dropped. We don't know how it's going to go. It could be great. It could be even better. But it could be worse. And we could be like, oh, do you remember? Do you remember when we were bemoaning an away draw in a, when we were in a title race under Klopp, whereas now we're eighth place and we're, you know... I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but you know what I mean? If we if we step further back from um, from everything, this is this is still a wonderful time to be a Liverpool fan. Yes, we could have extra points uh, over bad refereeing decisions this year. Yes, we should have beat United yesterday. Our situation right now is we're joint top of the league with seven games to go. And we've just played our hardest fixture in the run-in. The big, the big seven, as they're calling it. But put it past us. We'll swallow that. We'll do what everyone should do. We'll just fucking condense all the rage that we're feeling right now. And, you know, whatever or whatever we're feeling. We'll push it deep down inside and keep an eye on it. Thanks very much for the support. I will see you during the week after we trash Atalanta. And uh, have a good week up the fucking reds. It's not as bad as it seems. <laughs>